Hi everyone, you all know me as Sappho, and I wanted to make a video about coming out. And I want to clear the air and say that, for the record, I am a zoophile. <laughs> to compete with that every day we get weaker while they get stronger it's finished I'm sorry three weeks ago I watched the video about her you want to talk about her you talk to me Hey fellas, so before we begin the video, I'd like to quickly state that I am not advocating or encouraging the harassment, doxing, targeting, bullying of any individuals that might be mentioned or featured in this particular video. Remember, this is an opinion piece of my particular commentary on the subject matter that we will be discussing today, however controversial as it may be. So, with that all stated, let's go ahead and continue the video. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Did you pan it back and actually talk about something else today? By something else, yet again, it's more furry drama. It never ends, does it? No, it doesn't. Except there's a little bit of a twist today because this hits a lot closer to home than you might think. Because um, this pertains to a particular VR chat player out there that happens to be a furry. And you all know how much I love VR chat. I love the community here. I love the various activities that you can avail yourself to, such as the games, the worlds, you know. Even events, because conventions are now taking place in VR chat. They've been for a while now, but they become a lot more prominent this year, it feels like, ever since the COVID-19 began. Um, however, not all is well in the kingdom, because VR chat, the community, it's a very mixed bag, all right? You have various categories of people out there that happen to come from all walks of life. Some good, some not so good, some outright terrible. Um, the outright terrible, usually, it's kept to a minimum. I am aware of a lot of drama that happens, but usually the drama really boils down to people being catty or bratty to people. It's not really worth talking about to any great length of time, but um, this time I'm making a little bit of exception. If you're wondering why I don't cover very much uh, VR chat related drama, it's because I typically know better than to shit in my own backyard. Ah, uh, yeah. <clears throat> Oh no, this guy again! <laughs> Are you shitting on my fucking garden again? <laughs> Typically, it's why you shit in somebody else's backyard. Let them take care of the mess. But in this case, I'm making a big exception about this because um, this goes a little bit beyond being just catty or bratty. This goes a little bit beyond what you typically expect out of furries, you know, bad behavior and such like that. Um, so it all began about three weeks ago when a friend of mine had actually linked me to a particular YouTube video, and the YouTube video was from Hypnotist Sappos, and they were coming out. Now the typical connotations that you might have in coming out is that you might be coming out as gay or trans, or maybe even coming out as a furry. I mean, I've seen some furries feel it very important to be true to themselves and come out as a furry to their parents. I wouldn't personally recommend it, you know? That's just inviting needless awkwardness to your relationship with your significant loved ones and such like that, but at the same time, you do you. Now, gay or trans, I consider that a lot more personable to your mode of character. Um, I would definitely encourage you, when you come to terms with who you are as an individual, what boils down to your core essences, that you're feeling 110% sure about it, and that you can comfortably but confidently convey to people like your parents or your friends or maybe even coworkers that you happen to be trans or gay, um, you know, go ahead and do it. I would definitely encourage you, but only you can decide if it's the right time or not. I can't really tell you, you gotta do it now or you gotta do it later. You know, that's really a you decision. Uh, coming out as a furry, 
Well, I already told you my commentary about that, so... NEVER TELL YOUR PARENTS! <laughs> How about you, um, just keep it our little secret, alright? Because I wouldn't tell your parents. Like, they don't need to know your fetishes or kinks. They don't need to find your furry after dark on Twitter. They don't need to find your YouTube channel if you happen to be a YouTuber. Um, so I would just, like, keep them out of the equation. But if you don't want to do that, if you feel like it's very important that you gotta tell them, like, absolutely gotta tell them, hey, mom, dad, I'm a furry. Uh, you know, you do you, but don't come crying to me if, like, uh, something bad happens, all right? I would just keep that secret. The trans and gay thing, that's, you know, a lot more serious than just being a furry. Anyway, wheeling it back to our current topic of discussion, what was Sappho's coming out about? Was she coming out as gay or trans or as a furry to the followers that couldn't really, you know, sense that from her choice of avatar? Her choice of avatar is a wicker beast, by the way. It's a wicker beast a derivative um, with a very nice texture schema that is and shader pack that looks very attractive. Um, so, like, if you can't look at that and gain the sense that she's a furry, well, I don't know. And plus, her YouTube icon. Um, but no, Sapphos did not come out as gay, trans, or furry. They came out as being a zoophile. And I would say that a zoophile is a step up from being a zoo sadist insofar as you're not actively abusing animals for sexual gratification, but at the same time, it's not much better, all right? That's like saying cat shit's arguably better than dog shit. At the end of the day, it still fucking stinks, all right? And I say all this because the video it was about like 36 minutes long. I watched it then. I watched it again more recently to sort of parse her words and take it a little bit more seriously. I know. I've been dragging my feet about this because it pertains to a VR chat player, you know? And I don't typically look out for, you know, commenting on various members of the community that engage bad behavior unless it's very serious. I would think that being an admitted dog fucker is pretty serious, but it goes a little bit more serious than that, so bear with me. Um, but yeah, basically the first few minutes of the video, what kind of pissed me off is they tried to equate them coming out as a zoophile to gays and homosexuals in the 1960s coming out as gay then. And you already know historically that homosexuals in America especially, they faced a lot of harsh backlash and criticism, and in some cases were beaten down, like physically, you know, back then for coming out as gay. Like, that's something that you kept in the privacy of your own home. You didn't broadcast that you were gay, and you kind of kept that as a closely guarded secret, lest uh, your neighbors or some other people that happened to engage in violence came after your ass and decided to beat you down because, simply because what you are. Um, I, I notice it's like a recurrent theme with pedophiles and zoophiles. They want to latch onto the LGBTQ community as sort of a legitimization for what they happen to be and what they happen to like, but at the end of the day, it still feels like a justification to abuse minors or animals. And make no mistake, like, animals and minors, they cannot consent, okay? I don't care what you have to say about that. I don't care what you say, like the feeling of the animal that they conveyed consent somehow. These are creatures that are operating on a very simplified hardware and software to boot. Like they don't have the complexity of thought or re reason, reasoning skills or logic like we do and our capabilities of thinking beyond ourselves, all right? They just don't. And, like, I don't care how good of a relationship that you have with your dog. That doesn't really make it okay for you to fuck your dog or have your dog fuck you, all right? In case anybody was wondering. And also, like, one thing with pedophiles, um, like, the bar, like, the age of consent keeps going down, 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 down every time that they argue, this is just my sexuality. This is what I am. I should be able to love whatever age, like, all ages can consent. It's like, no, no. They can't, all right? They don't know any better. They haven't developed the maturity. Arguably, some adults haven't developed the mental maturity either to be able to make the decision to like consensually come together for purposes of sex. Anyway, all right. <clears throat> so the bulk of the video was basically talking about 
Like the first few minutes were basically just talking about, hey, I'm a zoophile. And like they said it in such a way that was like their very soft and soothing voice, trying to, you know, delicately reveal that they are zoophile and also with a sense of dignity. And they go into greater detail about the rationalization as to how they came to this conclusion and that, you know, there's certain rules that you have to follow if you're a zoophile, that you put the animal's well being above your own sexual gratification, and that. That, um, it's okay but it's not okay it like a good portion like two-thirds of that video felt like it was just needlessly putting honeyed words down to make it a lot more palatable for the general public and you know the purpose of the video was honestly like they come out and say that they just wanted to clear the air they want to put all their cards on the table they want to set the record straight. They wanted everybody and everybody that was interested in hearing what she had to say that she is a zoophile, aka a dog fucker, and that, you know, that she felt like she was okay with that, and that we just need to understand where she's coming from. Now, not only did this fill me with disgust and revulsion, but, you know, I just can't help but vex my mind as to the explanations that she's trying to offer as to why this is okay. And... To quote my friend, like, my friend basically equated this to social suicide. Um, as in her social standing in the overall community is, you know, <laughs> she's basically committing suicide, her reputation as a person. Um, did she stop there? Did she, you know, take this dignified approach to whatever backlash, criticisms, and harsh words that other people over the internet had to share with her? No... She responded more in the way of something like this. Hypnotist uh, Dog fucker. has joined your lobby. Not so dignified, is it? Like, it's one thing to make that video in the very beginning where you're just like, hey, I'm a zoophile, like, this is just, you know, what I am. If that bothers anybody, hey, whatever. She wanted to avoid a gotcha moment, like, if somebody found out her deepest, darkest secret, she'd rather reveal it. And I gotta say, like, I'm just being completely honest here. I respect her a lot more than I do Kira the Wolf. Granted, Kira the Wolf, what respect I have for them, I just, they are so deep underwater as far as my ideals and image of them in my mind, because, you know, they kept lying and denying and being, you know, a shitty person, honestly, that only cared about eCloud. They didn't care about their followers. They didn't care about anybody over the web. They didn't answer any, like, meaningful questions. They lied, denied, and tried to actively cover up any evidence of them and their zoophile crew. Um, you know, the zoo crew. It wasn't their zoo crew, but he was a part of it, you know? Anyway, like, this definitely raises a lot of red flags, all right? Because not only is she basically taking an indignant approach to all this, like, just being like, hey, I'm not the problem here. You're the problem. You're just a fucking hater. You're just an anti-zoo. And zoo files are valid. And, blah, 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 blah. and you know, it's that's any dignified response that you had any like you know air of legitimacy that you might have had however small went right out the window and like with a response like that let me just tell you the timeline the timeline was like three weeks ago she released a video about her being a zoophile and a week ago was the response video to the haters you know so i don't really look at this with fondness you know and it gets a little bit more detailed and a little bit more complicated here shortly, but I'll just say this. Um, she's accepting donations, apparently, you know? Like, and a cursory glance at her YouTube channel, um, she subscribed to some fairly controversial channels. Let's just put it that way. Now, the conservative or loosely conservative or political bullshit hoopla, I could give to you less of a fuck about um, what caught my interest the most is that the top three channels that were displayed happened to be all about zoophilia and bestiality. Imagine my shock. Um, so I couldn't help but sort of, like, look at that and just be like, yo, like, you know what's going on. And it gets a lot worse, but we're not quite there yet. But yeah, I mean, I don't understand. Like, my, my biggest question is... 
I understand that she wanted to do this to clear the air, to like air her, air what was like, get it off her chest, put her cards on the table and do whatever. But at the same time, did anybody ask? Was anybody actively looking into your background or like something like that? Like this, everything that she said, it's like nobody asked. We didn't need to hear this, okay? It's like, what, like, what did you think was going to happen? You knew what was going to happen. You knew how hyperbolically sensitive that furries can get about issues like this. It's disgusting. It's abhorrent. And people aren't going to support you when you come out saying that you're a zoophile. And you can have the softest sounding voice in the world. You can like convey your words in such an eloquent way that people, that you think in your mind that you're going to be able to convince people, hey, I'm a zoophile, but I'm a good zoophile. I look out for my dog. I really make sure that they're okay. And I put that above my, you know, desire in them. But at the end of the day, it's still going to get you the condemnation and backlash from the internet that has happened so many times before to the point that there's I'm surprised there hasn't already been a active witch hunt into all of this. Anyway, let's move on to, you know, another subject matter, shall we? So I couldn't help but notice that a fellow YouTuber, they actually entertained the notion of having Sappho's on for an interview. Now this wasn't a Discord conversation or anything like that, or even like a chat over the phone. This was purely over Telegram chat messages, and I don't like those kinds of conversations because text, a lot of nuance and tone gets lost when you're communicating via text. It's like having an argument with your friend, you know, like things that sound one way, like if you were to audibly say it to a friend, they sound entirely different when it's just straight text. But at the same time, you know, Sappho's thought they want, they reached out to like Cody Lovely and Coyote Lovely happens to be a YouTuber that engages in a lot of drama. They cover all the internet news, and they're not too dissimilar to mine, my channel, but at the same time, they seem a lot edgier than me, you know? Like, I'm like the Diet Coke compared to him, but that's okay, you know? It's like, whatever. We all have a different perspective and approach to certain things, but anyway, Sapphos actually reached out to them and was just like, hey, would you entertain the notion of an interview? And Coyote Lovely decided, hey, you know, ordinarily I wouldn't, but in your case, I'll make a small exception. So they have a conversation about it, just, you know, a little bit of a back and forth. Coyote Lovely was respectful and professional throughout the duration of their conversation together. And Sapphos basically went into detail about, you know, how they saw what was going on. They basically explained, you know, Kylie Lovely asked some basic questions like, hey, do you have any qualifications or certifications to be a hypnotherapist? And, you know, I've known some like hypnotist furries over on VR chat for a while now. Um, it's not really my cup of tea. Like I've never sat down for a session. I've never been hypnotized or put into a state of being open to mental suggestion. But at the same time, there's a growing denomination of furries that happen to like that sort of thing, whether it's for sexual gratification or otherwise. Sometimes it's like sort of a therapy session, you know? They want that sense of closeness and <clears throat> I guess like being spaced out and hyper-focused on something. That's the way it's been described to me. I don't know personally. It's a very complicated subject matter, like psychology in general. So anything involving psychology, this would be, you know, one of the various things that happen to make up psychology as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, um, she's currently studying to be like, you know, a therapist in that sense, but does not have the qualifications. But you know, there's the technicality. Hey, you don't need tech like qualifications and technically you do for the type of hypnotherapy that she is, you know, apparently specialized in. However, she sort of like, you know, flips flip flops between saying, hey, I'm not qualified, but, you know, I'm an authority figure in the realm of hypnotherapy. You know, it's and you see that like throughout the conversation, just not very overtly, but occasionally. And Coyote Lovely was quick to notice that. And at the same time, um, their back and forths were more or less cordial for the most part. Sapphos would occasionally make, uh, they would voice compliments to Coyote Lovely, basically saying, oh, you got a lovely voice, here's some gift art, and calling them by pet names and like, you know, doing little things like 
pats your head and things like that. Things that a normal furry would typically do. And she acted somewhat professionally, but also aloof occasionally, you know? And sort of like an unassuming act to adopt when you're engaging with somebody that is the closest thing that I can describe to an e-journalist. Um, but Coyote Lovely, he went a step beyond because he apparently did his homework ahead of time. He looked into Sappho's history, contacted various people that were either aware of her or you know had known her, and he got his own little scoop, and he wanted to weigh what he had learned against what Sappho's, how she would react and what she would say. And he, by his estimation, Sappho's is a little bit dishonest. Did I say a little bit? A little bit more than just a little bit. They're, they're dishonest, all right? They're apparently part of a community of zoophiles, and, like, there's some quote-unquote strict rules. Like, she says the rules of being able to be a part of this community are that you can't, like, they don't accept anybody that's below the age of 16 and anybody that's between 16 to 18. They can't engage in any, they don't have access to NSFW content as of yet, you know? Um, but there were like, there was at least one instance where a moderator had gotten involved with somebody and it was like a little bit, she treated it, she sort of like dismissed it as sort of like a mistake and Coyote Lovely couldn't help but feel like that was, you know, a little bit of an overreach. Um, that was like a, a big serious red flag moment that, you know, should have been addressed like more concretely than just being like, okay, but don't do it again. Um, yeah. So like. Sapphos being a part of a community of questionable people and for there to be the possibility of interactions between adults and minors and various other things. I'm not privy to their communications. Like, I haven't seen any screen caps. I haven't really cross-referenced anything. I can only go on his word and what I've learned so far. My only reaction was largely to that video. And it didn't really spur my interest because, you know, I try to avoid talking about anything VR chat related in a drama sphere on YouTube. But, you know, zoo files, like, I don't really like zoo files. You should all know this. If you've been following me for any great length of time, then you'll know how deeply involved I was in being an amateur sleuth deep diving into Cure the Wolf and his zoo crew. And the things that I found out. Uh, didn't exactly endear me to zoophiles or zoo sadists or bestiality enthusiasts, to say the least. You know, like, I don't, I don't feel like I owe them any favors in being discreet when I talk about this sort of shit, because, um, honestly, the more I hear from, like, about this sort of stuff, it brings home the question, does the furry fandom have a problem with pedophiles and zoophiles? Like... Are we too accepting as a fandom? Like, are we just, like, welcoming the dredges of the internet? Or, like, you know, the United States or anywhere else? Are we just welcoming them, in, welcoming them with open arms? I mean, just like, come on in. We take all. And it's like, if they're just the closest thing that I can describe as a loser, like, they don't have a lot going for them, that's one thing, you know, like, they can become inspired by people throughout the furry fandom, like the poppy furs, they can be, like, mentors, you know, and maybe some poppy furs are better than others, like, you know, because some are just kind of cringy and asshole-ish, but others can at least serve as an inspiration for them to improve themselves, to engage socially with other people, and to try to better their prospects in life, to not become a loser. Um, but, like, then you have people that are actively looking for minors or animals or people that have the same ideas and mindset as them. Like, Snake Thing, like, he, his association with Kira the Wolf, he liked the idea that he was, you know, corrupting them. That's what got him off. Like, he liked that. All right? So it's not beyond the suspension of disbelief that there are people like that that like to corrupt younger people to sort of think and act and like get involved into the things that they are you know and Sapphos she's in a position of like playing with people's egg salad you know their mind 
and you know it's really it's not as easy as like doing the whole i don't know like the pocket watch trick and like or just talking to somebody there's certain steps involved the person has to be in a state of being vulnerable to mental suggestion it takes a lot of trust between the hypnotist and the person that they're trying to hypnotize so it's not like as simple as just like hey like you're under my command now um but at least one kind of, like you know forwarded message from somebody was like hinting at the fact that Sapphos had indirectly taken advantage of four people that she was having a session with to for like sexual gratification and love the fact that like you know they came and like spoke her name when they were coming and I don't mean coming as in c-o-m-i-n-g I mean coming as in c-u-m-m-i-n-g you know so kind of questionable like you know and that she's trying to become a therapist thankfully she's admitted to coyote lovely that she is seeking therapy for her problem her problem being an attraction to animals over people she described people as being two-faced and irresponsibly untrustworthy which i can certainly empathize and sympathize with but at the same time that doesn't mean your next best bet for like a relationship is fucking your dog okay um, and the fact that she made that follow-up video, like, hey, zoo files are valid, like, you know, hit, like, dog fucker, hypnosis, Sapphos, enter your server, blah, 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 and it's like, you, you know, we don't have to accept you. <laughs> um, if it was the, it was just the first video, like, the first video of her coming out, she could have hung her head in shame temporarily and taken the backlash and condemnation of the internet, and she could have just walked in if I saw her in VR chat. It's okay, we don't have to be friends. We don't have to associate. I don't have to be your best friend, you know? Like, the few passing words that we might have will be probably a very dry and short conversation, but it doesn't mean that we have to, like, be best buds or anything like that, or engage in drama. Um, but at the same time, I don't like to associate with zoophiles. Thankfully, here's the thing. Here's the thing that kind of, like, at the back of my head kind of worries me a little bit. You don't know who you're associating with until you've been around them for a significant period of time. You know, you get a sense of all their little quirks. You get a sense of who they are as a person. Sometimes people are very reticent to share much about themselves, so you can really only boil it down to their personality. But other times, um, you found out little things about them that are unpleasant, you know? It's like, imagine, if you will, that you... You had a good friend back in middle school and you had a move, but your bond was so strong with this friend that you stayed in contact and then you sort of drifted apart. You drifted away like, and you didn't like know them for a significant period of time, like say five, 10 years. You go back because out of the sense of nostalgia and remembrance, you go back to the old neighborhood. You want to find this person again. You want to get in touch with them. You want to ha like, you know, get a sense of that good times and some closure. And then you find out that they're like a neo-Nazi or something. Like, and it's not overtly obvious until you go into their house and you see like a fucking portrait to the Fuhrer or like a little shrine dedicated to Adolf Hitler or, you know, various Nazi memorabilia that can't be explained as like a historical desire to like keep those kinds of objects. Um, yeah, it would be kind of a shock. I'm wondering how long Sapphos has been keeping the fact that they're a zoophile like to themselves and like is this something that's just sort of developed over time or is this something that she's been holding on to for a long time and hasn't decided to share until now it really does beg the question like why now in the year 2021 soon to be 2022 did you think that it was like perfectly acceptable to come out and be like i'm a zoophile yay like and you think that people are going to congratulate you and pat you on the back and treat you like a hero like are you serious that's that's not something to be proud of, okay? That's not like, you know, you being, you know, homosexual back when homosexuals were trying to fight for gay marriage and shit like that. You're not a hero. You're not a pioneer, okay? You're you're part of the social degeneracy that's plaguing like America right now and the internet culture to boot, you know? Um and I still am just going to assert that like children, neither children nor animals can consent. Okay? That is animal abuse. That is child abuse. 
all right? If you're wondering, I'm not trying to conflate the two. The two are very different, but they are similar insofar as they are a social taboo. You just don't do that, all right? <laughs> um, it, it just boggles the mind that they would have the audacity to come out and of now of all times contact coyote lovely invite them to an interview try to clear your name even though you peddled some lies and dishonesty see what happened between coyote lovely and Zaphos is that later on further into the conversation coyote lovely wasn't buying into what Zaphos was saying um he didn't go for it you know and in spite of Zaphos's best attempts to try to sugarcoat or to hummus up to him for support he wasn't budging and she got a little bit upset and would end up saying some kind of unpleasant, like, rude things later on. And then just, you know, blocked him. So whatever cordial civility was had to be there, uh, it just went right out the window, as you might expect. And it's unfortunate, but at the same time, I'm not all that surprised. It, I'm just wondering how much of her following has sta- stuck by her side, like, even now, in spite of the fact that she's a zoophile. How do people respond to this sort of thing? Is it sort of like a, well, I'm personally not into that, but I accept you for who you are. Or like if they are just completely oblivious to what kind of damage and what kind of problems that might create, just be like, eh, whatever. Um, So you're a zoophile. Can we still have our hypnotist session now, please? Anyway. At the end of the day, whichever way you want to slice it, this is just another story of another dog fucker in our midst. However, a self-admitted one. They're almost like a reverse Kira the Wolf in that sense. Um, in contrast to Kira the Wolf lying and denying, trying to actively erase fragments of their own past to prevent any bad actions and misdeeds from yesteryear from biting him in the ass when he had finally made it big, Sapphos comes out and freely admits it. You know, they just come right out and say, hey, I'm a zoophile. However, the dignified response they had offered to the internet, um, or I should say undignified response, because they made the assertion that they are what they are, um, and the internet responded in kind, basically with almost unilateral condemnation from all aspects and creeds from across the World Wide Web, and rather than accept the fact that this was probably an inevitability, uh, Sapphos decided to become indignant and basically a bit of a bitch. You know, basically making that little video where they're like dancing to the camera. It's like, go fuck yourselves. Zoo files are valid. Ba, 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 ba. You have to accept that I exist and you can't say anything otherwise. And, you know, that neither video got particularly good responses. I could see plenty of likes to some of the comments and, you know, various things that she said, which shows me that she still has some support. In fact, you know, the first video, like, coming out, that had garnered almost 500,000 views, you know? Like, that's gotten quite a bit of attention. Now, how much of that attention is in support, or maybe a more neutral standing, or maybe, you know, more out of curiosity and morbid fascination? Like, it remains to be seen. But plenty of people out there have voiced their absolute, you know, disgust and revulsion in the face of this and not without reason you know um it's weird in the furry fandom i absolutely love the furry fandom but i also love it like a redhead stepchild because i acknowledge that there is various there are various things going on that are not exactly pleasant to bear in mind but at the same time they happen and you know i am thankful for the fact that the Fandom has managed to keep its, you know, what little semblance of moral standing it has left in condemning people like Kiro the Wolf or, you know, Sapphos or various other people that basically try to drag the rest of us down. Um, The fact that Sapphos is seeking therapy for her issue is, should be indicative enough that that's not normal behavior. Like, it's not normal for you to formulate a relationship with animals as a alternative to humans, but, you know. In today's glorious day and age, anything goes, you know? Um, other than that, it's really just hones home to home that, like, maybe, like, there's a lot going on right now that I'm better off not knowing, you know? 
In Sapphire's case, it was just like, I didn't need to hear any of that. I didn't honestly, like, I wasn't looking to, like, hear this dissertation and explanation about why you're a zoophile and why that's okay. You know, I'm not interested. But, you know, the friend that linked me the video, he basically lost faith in humanity at that point. That's what he told me at the end. He just like, he basically gave this to me as sort of like a sign of the times that what little faith he had left in humanity had been whisked away into the ether. And God help him because he's about at the end of his rope. Hopefully not the end of a noose. Like, I really hope not. But it might get to that point one day. Let's really hope not. Anyway, no, this just brings back memories to, like, what I had discovered during my quote-unquote investigation into the Cure of the Wolf leaks and every, like, piece and fragment of material that I could possibly get from that. I saw a lot of shit that I didn't really need to see. Um, honestly, kind of want to grab that bottle of bleach and pour it directly into my eye sockets and try to forget some of that stuff. But some of those images are just burned to the back of my mind. And the fact that that Cure of the Wolf, rather than maybe come clean, maybe be honest to his followers, maybe be honest to the World Wide Web, he was willing to go, like, he leaps and bounds to protect his good name and to try to wipe away his past. And so obsessed with clout, even though it was just 100,000 subscribers. I know that's a lot, but that's nothing compared to somebody like PewDiePie or maybe even Majira Strawberry. Um, it was crazy that they were willing to, like, go to new lows to try to defend that, you know? And I... I don't know. The crazy thing about Kiro, he wasn't even the big fish of that catch. Like, all those leaks. He just happened to be recognizable and well-known enough that people could immediately recognize who he was because everybody else that was a part of that, if they hadn't already gotten arrested or investigated, they disappeared into the night because, you know, they weren't going to stick around to see what would find, like what would happen in the ensuing days if they stuck around. But no, um, Kiro, you know, it's just crazy that they are, like, I will say this. You know, in spite of the fact that most of the fandom had good sensibility to recognize the fact that Kira the Wolf wasn't as honest and transparent as he tried to be, um, Kira the Wolf has one thing hanging over us. He has never faced justice for his actions. He has been investigated. He had, like, his parents were investigated. There were numerous reasons why the investigation got botched along the way, partially due to the internet poking its nose where it didn't belong, but partly due to the fact that um, you know, statute of limitations and various other legal loopholes, if you'd like to consider them that. Um, that's why Kira the Wolf sort of escaped having to face justice for his actions and, you know, contributing to the death of his dog, Coda. And I'm not saying that because, like, you know, I'm saying that based on his words to Snake Thing. Because um, he basically felt guilty and reprehensible about that whole thing. So it's for that reason why I'm willing to sort of step up the plate and just talk about this because it's something that's worth broadcasting. Like, hey, these people exist amongst you, okay? Um, I can't certifiably point and be like, that's a zoo file, and that's not a zoo file, that's a zoo file. But it does beg the question, like, who is beyond reproach and who is definitely engaging in some bad China? Um... But no, that's one thing that Carol the Wolf will be able to hang over everybody else's head because for as many people that are out there that are going to point the finger at him and say, you're guilty, you son of a bitch. Yeah, Carol the Wolf's guilty as sin, you know? He might not admit it, but you can see in like his lies how petty he is and how he just seems to care nothing more than being popular again, which thankfully he's probably never going to accomplish, but, you know, stranger things have happened. But the one thing that he's going to be able to do is till the day he dies, he's going to say that he is innocent, he was framed by the trolls, that his bad actions were all fabrications and, you know, the responsibility of everybody else but him. And he was willing to throw everybody else but himself under the bus to save his own ass. And it's for that reason that whenever I hear somebody being like, I'm a zoophile, I like animals. Uh, I get a little bit pissed off, alright? I don't like my intelligence being insulted by all of these 
you know, this honey sweet eloquence that if I present the information to you in such a way, you will be forced to accept by logic and reason. And it's like, nah, nah, I don't. Okay, neither animals can consent, nor can children consent. And that is a fact. I don't have anything else to say right now. <sighs> I'm honestly feeling a little bit burnt out going down memory lane, remembering everything that I had learned during the Cure of the Wolf investigation. And it wasn't just me. There were dozens and dozens of YouTubers that all made their own revelations, and a lot of them were smart enough to point out some de key details that most of the masses were either... They put on the horse blinders with the whole Cure the Wolf is Innocent trope, or they focused on red herrings that didn't really contribute to the overall understanding that Cure the Wolf was a lying sack of shit. In any case, you know, it wasn't such a bad thing bringing him down. However, the one bad thing that I will say, you gotta wonder, like, what is the damage of so many high-profile furries being found out as being either pedophiles or zoophiles. That's very bad for the collective image of the furry fandom, don't you think? Like, people that you like or admire or that you are sort of engaging in hero worship for, they are found out to be engaging in morally reprehensible behavior that, you know, goes beyond anything that you could have accepted. Like, hell, it would be a shock if a friend of yours was a zoophile, pedophile, neo-Nazi, something like that, or maybe even a murderer. Um, imagine, like, somebody that you look up to, somebody that you treat like a mentor, somebody that you, you know, maybe want to emulate. You think they're cool. You think they're awesome. And then you find out that they're not as good as you. They're not as cool as you thought they were. It's a kick in the nuts, honestly. But... At this point, maybe I'm a little bit desensitized from everything I found out, everything I've seen, everything I've witnessed. Um, it wouldn't surprise me that much. It'd be depressing, but it wouldn't surprise me. Anyway, if I think of something else, I'll be sure to expatiate and, you know, add my two cents on top of the matter. But for right now, I'd like to bid you all do. Thank you for watching. Till next time, guys, take care and peace. I hope you all have a better one. Go ahead, have some fun. Hey fellas, thanks for watching the video. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Would you care to hit that like button and subscribe for more? I greatly appreciate it.